Tom Elliott. Donald Trump via Twitter where he loves to announce things. Do you believe it? The Obama administration agreed to take thousands of illegal immigrants from Australia. Why? I will study this dumb deal. Now, those words do not sound like a deal that is still being done. Three to six weekdays. As I said, it's been confirmed by his spokesman. It's been confirmed by his embassy acting on the authority of the White House. We expect that the commitment will uh, continue. Drive on 3AW693. News time, five past eight. 3AW weather for Ian Reid's Vindor Advocacy Australia. We help you sell. It's what they do. Early cloud, then sunny tomorrow, a top of 27 after an overnight low of 14. Saturday sunny, 34. Sunday rain at times, 25. Rain Monday, 20. Tuesday a possible shower, 22. Wednesday mostly sunny, 32. Thursday a possible shower, 31. It's 19 degrees at Frankston and in the city it's 20 degrees. Kiara Parker, Melbourne's own 3AW. And now on 2GB Sydney, 3AW Melbourne, 4BC Brisbane and network stations across Australia, this is Michael McLaren filling in for Steve Price. Well, a very good evening to you as we continue to fill in for Steve of the Jungle. Of course, it is the 2nd of February 2017. Lovely to have your company up and down the eastern seaboard. 131873, the open line number. Being a Thursday, we'll have all the regulars that Steve normally does. Andrew Bolt, of course, chomping at the bit. I know what we're going to talk about. Got a pretty good idea. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be that refugee deal. Or was it a deal? You know, I, I just wonder if out of all of this, it's just been a simple... I'm saying this tongue-in-cheek, simple uh, misunderstanding. Uh, when Donald said it was a dumb deal, Malcolm thought it was a done deal and went off and told everyone it's sweet. Maybe it's that simple, maybe it's more complicated. We'll, uh, we'll de unpack a bit of that in just a sec with Andrew Bolt. Uh, don't forget also, stay with us right till the end. I'm going to speak with Philip Rucker, one of the two journalists from the Washington Post, which really have set the agenda for today in Australia. That is, they were the two that broke that story about Donald Trump and Malcolm Turnbull's apparently less than cordial phone conversation, certainly around the Manus Island and Nauru refugee swap deal. As I said, we'll speak to Andrew Bolt about that right now. You're listening to Nights with Michael McLaren and Andrew Bolt, right across Australia. Very good evening, Andrew. You made me laugh out loud, mate. Very funny. Trump said it's a dumb deal. Turnbull heard it as a done deal. <laughs> Maybe no more complicated than that. <laughs> that could be all there is to it, eh? <laughs> bit too much earwax. No, well, look, it's uh, it is how funny. I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to think. I was asking people at lunch today. Uh, you try and remind, tell me when was the last time an American president cast such a huge shadow of the Australian politics, uh, you know, and, and if you wake up every day and our politicians must react to Donald Trump. It was probably, well, you know, you'd probably have to go back to, to when Whitlam was the Prime Minister and there were the rumbles that the CIA were trying to remove him. Yeah, that, that, that's not one president, um, you know, casting over everything. I mean, every single day. It's just unbelievable. Well, here we have, you know, look, there are a lot of journalists saying, here's Donald Trump being uh, flaky, dishonouring deals, going back on his word, being rude to an important ally, showing he's not fit to be President of the United States. What's happened is we've had uh, a Washington Post expose uh, based on leaks that they tell me are not from Donald Trump, uh, not authorised by him. Leaks that say... Well, Donald Trump had a conversation with Turnbull. Uh, it was supposed to go for 60 minutes. It was last uh, Sunday. It went for 25, and then Donald Trump hang, hung up. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, Malcolm Turnbull was pitching for Donald Trump to honour a deal that Malcolm Turnbull made with Barack Obama last year to take 1,200 of our boat people on Nauru and on Manus Island and just take them to America. For what reason? Nobody well, no, no one knows. Do, do Malcolm a favour or something. And, uh, and Donald Trump told him, hey, listen, this is a terrible deal, the worst deal ever. Um, I'm going to be killed for it, you know, uh, figuratively, um, because you're asking me to bring in the next Boston bombers. Well, you know, that's a bit of hyperbole. Uh, this has now been leaked. And he said, by the way, this is the worst conversation I've had of all the world leaders I've talked to. Mm. Um, now, 
there are a few things about this. One is that Malcolm Turnbull has not denied any detail of that apart from one, and that is whether uh, Trump hung up on him or not. Well, let's semantics. Let's say the conversation finished 35 minutes early. <laughs> 35 minutes early. And I don't think Malcolm Turnbull was the one that wanted to hang up, right? I don't think he would have said, I've got to I go now. It. So I think we can uh, safely assume that on this detail, Malcolm Turnbull is wrong. But now that it's been leaked, Donald Trump has got no option but to go cold on this deal because he's been uh, quoted as saying that the deal is rubbish, worst deal ever, and it'll be importing Boston bombers. Now, again, hyperbole. But he can then hardly go to the American people and say, but I'm still going to honour it. I'm going to... Well, on the one hand, he's Mr Tough Guy when it comes to border security. Can't do it. Uh, he can't then go after making the comments you've just said, oh, well, but look, I'm going to take the risk and bring in the Boston bombers. No, exactly right. And, and also, when it's in direct contradiction to everything he said, everything he promised in the election, and said last week he was delivering by freezing for 90 days visitors from uh, freezing uh, travel from visitors from seven jihadist plague countries some of whom provided the boat people that he now is being forced to take now now it's absolutely true that Donald Trump is going back on something that the White House press secretary said just two days ago that the deal would be honored that is perfectly true. Mixed messages, that's bad, right? That's bad. It's also bad that a conversation that Donald Trump has with a leader of one of these, his, you know, the big allies is leaked in the Washington Post. Mm. That's also a bad, a bad thing, a bad thing. So I quite, quite accept that. But here, but, 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 the real problem here, the, the beginning of this disaster for Turnbull started with uh, Malcolm Turnbull tried a really cheap business deal kind of tactic. He's not a great businessman. I know he's rich, but he got a bit lucky. But this is cheap shot business deal that he tried. He made a deal. Let's go back. How it all happened. He made a deal with Barack Obama, who's a Democrat, as president. He was negotiating with him. Thought it was all in the, you know, all going along quite nicely. Barack Obama, for reasons unknown, would take 1,200 boat people off his hands. Then, to Malcolm Turnbull's evident surprise and horror, because you saw it on election night at his press conference, and said, oh, don't panic, don't panic. The unexpected happened. Donald Trump won the election on November 8. Donald Trump won. And Donald Trump won on a clear, explicit, much-repeated platform that he would stop exactly this kind of thing. People coming in, particularly refugees, from jihadist kind of countries like Iran, specifically Iran, from which most many of these boat people come. So here's a deal that he was negotiating with Obama that went directly against what the new incoming president had promised. What did Turnbull do? He didn't say, oh, well, let's we better run it past uh, Trump first. He didn't do that. He didn't say, let's wait and see how Trump will go. No, he tried a cheap business tactic. He brought forward the press conference that he'd been thinking about holding this year. He brought it forward to five days after Trump's win, just five days later, and said, I've got a deal with Barack Obama. Here it is. Where he's going to take all these people from us. And when journalists asked him, they said, at the press conference, they said, but wait a minute, have you checked this with, with uh, Trump? He said, oh, we only deal with one president at a time because Trump had not yet formally taken office, which yes. he only did this month. Mm. Now... Here is Malcolm Turnbull betting that he could go to Donald Trump and say, gotcha, foxed you, we made a deal just before you took the, the office and we reckon you're going to just wear it rather than break it. We reckon you're just going to be too embarrassed to say, no, it's off. You know, foxed you. And it goes directly against uh, Donald Trump. All your election promises are going to make a goose of you. Uh, we know it's the kind of deal that is already being attacked by conservative people like uh, Fox News host uh, Bill O'Reilly, who's been going on about it. Uh, Republican senators have been hot, you know, really opposed to this. We're going to offend your base. It's going to do nothing for America, but you're going to honour this deal because we tricked you. Can anyone possibly think, A, 
that Malcolm Turnbull was being smart and B, that this wouldn't end in tears. Well, can I add to that, Andrew? Perhaps Malcolm Turnbull uh, misread or uh, got wrong the actual meaning of the language in the conversation because according to that uh, Washington Post uh, report this morning from which we're all Mm. getting all this from, uh, Trump said to Turnbull, quote, I don't want these people, end quote, and told Turnbull that it was my intention, end quote, to honour the agreement. As they say here, a phrase designed to leave the US president wiggle room to back out of the deal in the future. Now, it could just be the case that Malcolm Turnbull heard those words, it's my intention to honour the deal, and, took it as and, and say, well, there it is, it's, it's inked, we're done, and ran out and said, you know what, I've, I've, I've scored the score of the century here. Uh, whereas, in fact, as the Washington Post says, such language is really nothing much more than wiggle room for Trump. Correct. Now, Turnbull's office is briefing frantically sympathetic journalists to say, no, no, the language was harder than that. But that is what's been leaked out, and uh, I tend to think that Trump, that the the Trump version, is more likely than the unsourced Turnbull version. You know, there is also right? another there is another option here, and that is that Turnbull and Trump could still strike the deal, and still no refugees go to America because Turnbull also, according to the Washington Post, told Trump that to honour the agreement, the United States would not have to accept all of the refugees, but rather only allow those through that get past the normal vetting procedure. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, and he said they're going to be really extreme vetting, yeah. so it could be so extreme that none of them that none pass. get through. So he says, yeah, I'll, I'll sign the deal, but um, yep, none of, them, none of them cut the mustard. So no, they're that, not that's absolutely correct. So even if it does, even if he does say, oh, I'll honour it, but I'm going to extreme vetting, we still don't know. How many effect, go? How, whether, whether yeah. it'll make much difference. That's, right. that's absolutely right. But here's the thing: whether or not Trump. Uh, Turnbull heard what he wanted to hear rather than what he should have been picking up on, the wriggle room that you talk about. Here's the thing. He could have been in no doubt that the President of the United States was deeply unhappy about a deal that gave him, that made him look like uh, breaking a promise breaker and would cause him grief in America, was in, could have been in no doubt that this was a problem and had been hung up on. The conversation had only gone half the time. Mm. And yet, it seems that he repeated the same error he made back in November by briefing immediately that the deal was all sweet and going out and saying it publicly uh, the day later to, to journalists. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's all happening. So it's he all jumped happening. the gun. So once again, it seems to me, he tried that tactic of, I'll say it, and Trump will have, be, have no option but to honour it. Well, Trump is not the usual character, not the usual president. He is not that kind of businessman. And anyone who really studies him uh, would know that. He bet on Trump being embarrassable, sticking by old deals that he hated, made by people he despised, and that were his political opponents, and that were of no benefit for him, and would hurt him domestically, that he'd stick by it just because Barack Obama had signed the deal. Ah, 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 ah. So from my point of view, you can criticise aspects of Trump's behaviour, you can criticise the the leaking, you can criticise, um, you know, hanging up and uh, after just 25 minutes an important Australian ally and all that kind of stuff. You can criticise... Cri- yes, 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 yes. But the origins of this deal come from very sharp business practices that Malcolm Turnbull tried on a superior businessman and has now got called out on. Well, uh, if Trump didn't leak the information, I mean, this is important to get to the bottom of this. Who Correct. Who allowed this to leak out? It must have been someone very close to Trump. Yeah, well, very interesting, and I agree with you. And then why did uh, they I'm, let it out? I'm hoping that you're going to ask the journalist from the Washington Post. Indeed, I will. I asked this colleague, the co-author of the same article, that twice... Uh, just before, and he insists it wasn't something that Trump wanted, wanted, but wouldn't be unhappy that it got out. But my tip, if we believe the Washington Post, and it's a Trump-hating outfit, I mean, they're really anti-Trump. Mm. If if we believe the Washington Post's uh, wink and a nod that this was not from Donald Trump and not authorised from Donald Trump, my tip would be this. It's either someone 
a leftover from the Clinton uh, from the Obama era who wants to portray Trump exactly as the Washington Post has done. Oh, so flaky, so rude to an ally. How can we have this barbarian in the Oval Office? Or, which may be more likely, it's actually a more conservative person in Trump's office who says, I want to get the president out of this. We shouldn't be taking in these people. This is going to hurt us with the base. I get it out there. Trump will have no option but to can the deal. Mm. And I think that mm. that might be also possible. So I'm hoping uh, you'll get some answers. We'll find out. We'll take a break. We'll come back with your calls. One three one eight seven three. the open line number.